Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and in a few hours' time, all being well, Mars Insight will touch down on Mars on Elysium Planitia. Mars Insight, as you know, launched earlier this year on an Atlas 401 out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. It's being operated out of JPL, so I'm going to say there's a certain amount of a... Uh, I certainly want to say that this is very much a California mission, but that would be missing the obvious fact that its two main experiments are actually European experiments. But, uh, you know, this is more than a single spacecraft. This is actually a formation of spacecraft bearing down on the red planet. There's the core InSight spacecraft, and then on their own trajectories, there's two CubeSats called Marco A and Marco B. And these are actually really interesting because they are essentially test beds for new technology. They, to test whether you can fly and successfully operate CubeSats in deep space trajectories. These uh, have high, you know, high quality, high, uh, you know, high gain antennas, and they also have their own propulsion systems. And on this mission, they initially went onto their own orbit. They used little cameras to take pictures of things, but you know, whatever. What they're really going to do is they're going to help relay data from InSight during re-entry. Ah, yes, re-entry. That's the scariest part of any mission because that's the place where the forces are the greatest, where the margin for error is the finest. Uh, Mars InSight is going to head into the atmosphere at something like 12,000 miles an hour and it's first of all going to use a heat shield to decelerate down to maybe about a thousand kilometers per hour. At that point it will pop out a parachute which will slow it down to hundreds of kilometers per hour. It'll then pop off its heat shield, slow down a little more and then as it gets close to the ground the spacecraft will drop out of this casing and fall and then land using rockets. Now all the way down it will be transmitting signals so that people back on Earth can track whether this is being successful or not. First of all, it's going to have a very simple carrier tone that is being transmitted. And this, um, the whole point of this is that you've got antenna back on Earth that can pick this out of the background and they can watch as the frequency of this tone changes slightly. And as it changes, this is an indication of a change in velocity. So they will know what phase of the descent this is going through and they will be able to see whether the parachute opens, for example, because that will show a change in velocity at a certain rate. But more importantly, the spacecraft is going to be broadcasting telemetry at about 8 kilobits per second. And there's a number of spacecraft near Mars which will pick this up and relay it back. Uh, so there's also there's old spacecraft like Mars Odyssey and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. These will actually get that data and then they're programmed to forward it to Earth. But they're going to take a few hours to actually organize this and get it back. Marco A and B, that's their entire job. So they're going to get this data and immediately after they see the landing, they're going to turn their high gain antennas to Earth and squirt that data back. And hopefully we will get a much clearer picture of whether the descent worked or not. Now, when I say picture, of course, I'm not literally meaning pictures, although we might get some of that at a later point. Now, why uh, why are we putting a lander on Mars? A lot of people are asking because the InSight is based on the Phoenix lander design. Phoenix went to the North Pole of Mars and confirmed the existence of you know water ice and stuff up there. But um, obviously, Curiosity, Opportunity, they're the sexy rovers. They've been driving all over the surface looking at cool stuff. Well, the operative word here is surface. These are very much skin-deep experiments that these things are doing. And while they can roam far and wide, InSight is going to sit in one place and it is going to go deep. Yeah, the instrument that goes that deep is a fancy thermometer known as the Heat Flow and Physical Properties Package. It, it, it is basically a thermometer and it's going to go deep inside Mars, five meters deep if all goes well. It's, it takes the form of what they describe as a self-driving nail. It's a probe which is about 35 centimeters long, 3.5 centimeters wide, and it contains a mass. And they pull that back and then let it smash forward into the casing and that drives it forward slowly over time and it will go down and down and it is attached to a tether. The tether includes temperature sensors every 10 centimeters. So they can actually um, generate heat pulses in this. They can do experiments with 
how the heat flows out of this, but what they're really looking for is evidence that there is heat flowing up from the interior of Mars. Now, Mars and Earth would have formed around the same time, but Mars seems to have gone through its evolution quite a bit faster than the Earth. It's much drier, presumably, because it's a smaller body and has therefore lost more of its uh, water to space due to the lower gravity. But there's questions, you know, is Mars still geologically active? Does it have a liquid core? Well, obviously InSight wants to know this. Now, the other way they're going to look at the interior of Mars is, of course, using seismology. There's going to be a seismometer on Mars InSight, and this is not the first seismometer that has been sent to Mars, but it's the first one that is designed to do it right, because the Viking spacecraft both carried seismometers, but they did not produce particularly good data because the, uh, they, the seismometer was on the spacecraft itself, which was, of course, sitting on landing legs and was attached to a bunch of other hardware that was doing stuff like controlling its heat regulation. It was doing experiments. And whenever anything on the spacecraft moved, that would generate vibrations, which would be would go into the seismometer and generate false alarms. Also, because the seismometers were on the spacecraft, whenever wind blew the spacecraft, that would generate false signals as well. So the results from those seismometers were inconclusive. For Mars InSight, the seismometer is a package which will get picked up by a robot arm and then gently placed on the surface next to the spacecraft. And then, to protect it from wind, the same robot arm will grab a little cover and drop that over it and therefore isolate the seismometer, hoping to finally start getting good data. And even if Mars is tectonically, geologically dead, if there is no internal forces, we still expect seismic waves because Mars is a lot closer to the asteroid belt and also, its atmosphere is a lot thinner, so it's going to have a lot more space debris chunks, asteroids, you know, crashing into the surface over time. And those will all generate seismic events. We'll actually hope to get a whole better handle on the flux of asteroids near the main belt, as well as good data on how the, the structure of Martian interior. Again, you know, is there a, how thick is the crust? What's the mantle like? Is there a liquid core? Is there a solid core? You know, are those volcanoes, is Olympus Mons actually generating volcanic activity or is it so dead that it is not doing anything? It's a good question. There's a few other supporting experiments on the spacecraft. I mean, there's obviously a weather station because they want to make sure that the, there's not heavy winds that are messing with the seismometer, even through the, um, through the cover. There's a, a very simple laser reflector, which will help get accurate positional information if you're using a laser. And JPL are going to use the onboard uh, transmitters to measure Doppler shifts, and they're going to get an idea of whether Mars is wobbling. And, you know, you would expect a planet with a chunk of mass the size of Olympus Mons to perhaps have some sort of wobble. But yeah, that is Mars InSight, and it is going to be headed that way. Now, I'm going to point out the seismometer was actually the reason why this is landing in 2018 rather than 2016. Originally, they were going to launch in 2016, but it had technical issues and they ended up having to bump it from its window to two years down the, the road. But it did take off in May from Vandenberg. And I'm going to say it took off in possibly the foggiest weather that I've ever seen a rocket launch from Vandenberg. All the people that traveled from all around to see this launch up close, all they saw was a an orange glow in the fog and they heard a distant rumble. But of course, that didn't stop the rocket. Nothing stopped, nothing like that would stop an Atlas 401. But yeah, it's now on its way. It's gonna hit Mars in a, a few hours from now. And so yeah, it's got a fairly hard job ahead of it, but I'm sure NASA engineers have figured it all out. But just in case I really mean it this time, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. <laughs>